So my name is Anne and I work for Safran Electronics and Defense, which is one of Safran's uh, subsidiary. Uh, Safran is a large aerospace and defense group of 90,000 people. So Safran is leading the, the industry in um, many kinds of technology. Uh, for instance, inertial navigation systems and tactical uh, remote piloted aircraft system. And from um, the core technology that we manufacture, we integrate them into larger and more complex systems, such as the patroller UAV. So patroller is a remote piloted aircraft system of class one ton, uh, which can be operated in any conditions by day or by night. Uh, it can embark up to 250 kilograms of diverse payload and can process and transmit information in real time up to 200 kilometer range. Patroller can be equipped with very various types of payloads depending on the mission. So for instance, we have here um, electronic warfare. We also have radar, um, rocket, extra fuel pod, maritime radar and cartographic pod. Patroller can embark very various um, type of payload to cope with the very diverse missions that military and homeland security organizations need to carry out, ranging from um, intelligence, tactical reconnaissance, up to surveillance of borders, surveillance of maritime areas, coastlines, also monitoring of major events and protection of sensitive sites. So FN Herstal is part of the Herstal Group uh, on the military branch of the group. Uh, we focus on small arms and weapon systems and we exhibit here for the first time during Paris Show 2019 our one-stop shop approach. Uh, on the one-stop shop approach we have first the crew served weapon range where we do integrate our mags and the M3M on board rotary wing platforms uh, such as this helicopter mock-up. Uh, out of the two main armaments which are integrated, so are the MAG in the 762mm calibre and the M3M as a .50 cal weapon. Um, we do integrate our weapon systems onto uh, OEM's platforms all around the world and we can say that any OEM platform is equipped with a FN Crewsoft weapon either located at the window, door or ramp positions. The two weapon systems which uh, you see here are qualified at 20 G, so at the highest level uh, of airborne qualification. We as well exhibit for the first time our digital suite over here. Um, in this specific configuration, we showcase the RMP, the rocket machine gun pod, featuring a high rate of fire M3M, as well as three rocket tube at the back, so capable of shooting 70 mm rockets. Uh, the pod over here, the RMP, is the digital version of, uh, of the pod. Uh, the pod is connected onto a network developed by FN, which can be integrated onto any helicopter platform. So the second member of the family consists of a head-up display developed by FN, which is part of this digital suite. As well, we have a choice of armament management system, either a two-station digital pod controller, so controlling a machine gun pod or a rocket pod, as well as a, an alternative with six uh, weapon systems uh, to be connected, three on the left-hand side, three on the right-hand side, uh, capable to manage um, machine gun pods, rocket pods, uh, missiles, as well as bombs. Uh, so the, uh, these three digital subsystems um, form a digital suite which is promoted by FN here in Le Bourget Air Show 2019. So on the right hand side of this helicopter we do showcase the M3M which is the worldwide reference for airborne applications in the .50 cal uh, segment. Um, this specific system is located in the external position of the helicopter, so allowing to free a maximum of space within the cabin while uh, increasing the firing window uh, for the gunner. It features a 300 ammunition box uh, at the rear and uh, the fitting of the weapon is uh, done over here on the left hand side of, of the weapon. A variety of sites are available onto the Picatinny rails of uh, the M3M system. 
Now, uh, this global promotion during Paris Air Show aims at uh, highlighting the fact that SFN is a one-stop shop and will ever uh, increase uh, its um, position as a one-stop shop provider to our uh, B2B but as well B2C, so business-to-business -business and business-to-consumer uh, customers and provide global weapon solutions for crew served as well as uh, actually mounted weapon systems. Hello, I'm Nicholas Bielecoq. I'm uh, recently joined the uh, Azure Drone company. So Azure Drone is a French company, a French drone company that was founded in 2012 and that decided in 2016 to focus on one specific business, a fully autonomous drone for video surveillance of, uh, of uh, industrial sites. So that's a French company that's located in Bordeaux, uh, in the south of France and uh, with uh, 60 people uh, working for this company and has developed the, the SkyTech solution. So this, uh, this drone that you see here uh, with uh, eight, uh, eight engines that's an, uh, an, uh, that are put uh, across the, uh, the drone. And, uh, and we sell not only the drone, but also the box uh, that the drone uh, lands on. And the docks uh, serve as a, as a charging station and also like a protection hangar, uh, just to be able to withstand any kind of, uh, of weather. So our system is fully autonomous. It means that it doesn't require any, uh, any pilot uh, piloting the drone. Uh, we install the system in a like, critical site that uh, needs a, a aerial surveillance of their activity. And, uh, and the drone is fully operated only by the, uh, the, uh, the people on the uh, video management system, so basically that you see on, uh, on every side, you have people uh, doing uh, video surveillance. So that's just one more camera that you add to the system. So the camera itself has a, has a zoom of uh, 20 uh, times, and uh, that's for the, uh, the visual uh, camera. And we have also an infrared camera, four times zoom. So the drone is available 24, uh, 24 seven. And, uh, and as I said, it's, it's just operated by, uh, by the, uh, the uh, security uh, uh, agent that has been trained maybe half a, half a day only compared to a training of a, of a drone pilot. So we think that's a pretty a really interesting solution. There's a huge market behind that because basically every big industrial site uh, that uh, that has uh, safety or, or security uh, issues and want to increase their knowledge of what's happening on the site uh, can have access with this autonomous drone of an aerial view of, uh, of their of their site. My name is Gideon Weiss. I'm Deputy General Manager for the Air and C4ISR Division of Rafael. Uh, Rafael is an Israeli defense company. And here in Paris, we are showing this week a few innovations uh, that are really uh, new technologies that we're bringing into the battle space. The first one here is our lightning pod, the brother of uh, the Reykjavik pod. And with the advanced electro-optics that we have, we're showing a new capability that incorporates synthetic aperture radar. So we call it Lightning Plus SAR. It takes the regular pod with a new electronics that we put in right here and an antenna that enables a starboard scanning of the entire arena. This enables pilots to uh, be able to execute their mission while operating above clouds and in severe weather. In the tactical missiles domain, Rafael is presenting the entire family of Spike, from Spike Enlos, Spike ER2, Spike LR2, and Spike SR. And as you can see, these missiles have different ranges. The maximum ranges varies if you shoot them from the ground or from the helicopters. Here at the Paris Air Show, we're showing a helicopter simulator in which uh, users can come in and actually see what is the effect and the tactical capability of all of the spike missiles that they can shoot in theater. While in flight, the operator is capable of retargeting, tracking a moving target, retargeting to another target, and refining the aim point over the target. The operator can actually abort the mission until the last moment, in this case, 
It's a bingo. Bonjour, je m'appelle Sébastien Palapra, je travaille au sein de MBDA, la division Futur System, et en charge des études sur le SCAF, le système de combat aérien futur. Alors MBDA, c'est une, une, une entreprise européenne euh, située donc en France, Angleterre, Allemagne, Italie, Espagne. Un, on nous fait des, des systèmes de missiles, euh, que ce soit en RR, en air sol, en solaire, dans le domaine de l'air, dans le domaine maritime, domaine terrestre. Et ici, typiquement au Bourget 2019, nous présentons euh, euh, des concepts euh, euh, issus de, des réflexions, des études euh, nationales, euh, France, mais également Allemagne, Italie, euh, Angleterre, sur euh, les, les armements du futur, des futurs, euh, ce qu'on appelle les futurs air systems, donc tous les armements qui iront euh, au sein des, euh, de ce qu'on appelle les, les, le FCAS, futur, futur Combat Air System, euh, que Dassault et Airbus ont présenté euh, hier ici au Bourget, euh, mais également le Tempest, euh, le Tempest qui est l'équivalent niveau euh, UK. Ici vous avez donc deux remote carriers. Euh, ce que nous croyons au sein d'un MBDA, c'est d'avoir de la synergie avec les armements, euh, c'est-à-dire de conserver les enveloppes externes, conserver la propulsion, mais en revanche d'enlever de, une partie de la charge militaire et à la place de mettre de la charge utile en fonction des fameux services dont, dont je vous parlais. Ces services, ça peut être de la guerre électronique, ça peut être du renseignement, ça peut être du capteur infrarouge, ça peut être du relais de communication par exemple. Donc euh, c'est donc ça le principe du remote carrier. Et ici, on vous présente deux familles, le RC type 100, le remote carrier type 100, euh, et, le, et le type 200. Une autre partie que nous présentons ici au sein du Bourget 2019, euh, c'est la partie concernant les armements euh, plus classiques, ce qu'on appelle le tactical strike, c'est-à-dire la, la, le, les armements air sol dédiés aux cibles classiques, euh, standards. Ce qu'on voit ici, c'est qu'on vous propose, c'est du Smart Glider. Le Smart Glider, c'est un, un armement euh, euh, connecté, euh, un armement très compact, euh, on est sur une classe de, de moins de 2 mètres, une classe de, de 120 kg. Euh, en termes de concept, euh, nous imaginons une évolution de ce Smart Glider que vous avez vu derrière vous, que nous appelons le Smart Cruiser, qui est une évolution du Smart Glider euh, auquel nous avons euh, ajouté une propulsion. Euh, cette propulsion, en fait, on, on garde le, la, le, le même senseur à l'avant. Nous gardons forcément un petit peu moins de charge militaire puisqu'on a une propulsion, donc il faut mettre de la place pour la propulsion. Euh, mais l'idée c'est de partager la même euh, classe de masse, on est sur une classe de 150 kg, euh, partager la même intégration, donc c'est-à-dire sous, sous exalenceur, mais la propulsion permettant d'avoir une, une portée bien plus grande, euh, typiquement sur des tirs en haute altitude, on va être capable de dans de grandeur de tripler euh, la portée du, 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 du Smart Glider. Euh, donc pour être capable de traiter des menaces encore plus évoluées sur un horizon 2040 plus.